So you own the steel MS250 chainsaw. Formerly the 025 going back many years. Hey guys, this is an old trusty steel chainsaw. It's been around for two decades now. And it's proven reliable, functional, pretty, pretty durable for what it is. Awesome 18 inch, three horsepower chainsaw that features all of the, the things that, that you want in a steel chainsaw from the easy tensioner to the quick caps, to the quick access air filter. Today we're gonna to go over how to start it, how to run it, what you need to do to maintain it, kind of some of the highlights of stuff. Let's start out with chaps. I've got chaps on right now. Anytime I run a chainsaw, I wear chaps. What are chaps? They're, they're a protective layer that goes over your pants and it's six or eight, I think it is, layers of material stacked on top of each other and it's real fine material. As soon as the chainsaw cutter tooth cuts through the outside, it shreds that material and it jams the bar and chain up uh, almost immediately, preventing you from doing significant damage to your limbs. So I highly recommend chaps. If you don't have them, pick up a pair. They run between 80 and 120 bucks, significantly cheaper than a, than a few days down with a leg injury. So check out chaps. Always want to protect our ears, right? So whether that's done with just traditional ear muffs like this, or do I get a, a nice steel forestry helmet that's got my ear muffs, my face protection, and a, and a helmet. So I like the helmet. It's nice because I can flip those ear muffs off and talk to somebody, um, get them out of the way while I'm working, and then drop them down when I go to work. So check out that safety stuff, and, and always you know protect your eyes, whether that's with the, the face shield or with some safety glasses. And wear appropriate safety glasses. If it's a dark day, I probably don't want to wear sunglasses because my visibility is going to be a challenge. So, okay, let's get into the saw. This is a two cycle machine. We know that, right? So, we're mixing gas and oil. Uh, I'm going to mix HP Super, no, HP Ultra, one of these bottles to a gallon of gas. And I always, always, always recommend ethanol free fuel. Um, I've just seen enough damage. I know there's people that haven't. You're playing Russian roulette. That's awesome. Good for you. But uh, I've seen enough damage with ethanol over the years to carburetors, to diaphragms, to fuel lines. Um, so try to stay away from ethanol fuel. If you don't have a choice, there are treatments that we can get. But again, that's like putting a Band-Aid on, my, on myself. I don't want to cut in the first place. So let's avoid needing a Band-Aid. The ultimate, though, is Motomix, right? So if... If I'm a light user, if I don't use this often, you know, maybe sporadically throughout the year, I'd maybe go Moto Mix full time. Or if if you don't want to run it full time, at least in times of hibernation. This is Steel's pre-mixed gas fuel. It's a 93 octane, has an incredible shelf life. It starts better, runs better. It's great stuff. Okay, so there's my spiel about fuel. Fuel is going to go right here. They have the the flip top cap. I like these, I hear some complaints about it, I get it. When it fails, it's frustrating, but I saw other caps fail too. So flip up, quarter turn, pop out the cap, fill it up, fresh fuel. Then we got bar oil. Bar oil is gonna go in the front tank right here. Again, quarter turn. Every time I fill the gas, I wanna fill the bar oil. The importance of bar oil, it's lubricating this bar and chain. This chain is spinning at a very high rate of speed. I don't know how many miles per hour, but it's freaking flying, right? And it's building up heat and friction. So I need to keep that lubricated. With the steel MS250, the woodcutter bar oil is suffice. This would be great bar oil for this application. So bar oil every time I fill the gas. Chain tension on the steel MS250 is right here. My bar nuts, I take these loose, generally about a turn. And then the tensioner screw is right here in the middle. Okay, let's show you the tension in just a minute. Let me back this off so I got a loose chain, like so. Okay, and then I turn this clockwise, and as soon as I get contact in the middle of the bar, as soon as that top of that what I'll call tie strap hits the bottom of the bar there, I give it a half a turn more. Okay? That should be about the proper tension. There's some variables in there depending on the type of cutting that I'm doing. Now I'm going to hold up on the bar and chain and I'm going to tighten these bar nuts all the way down. So that's how to tension the chain. Let's, let's back up here real quick. 
Let's get inside this cover. Let's talk about what you need to pay attention to underneath, what you need to do inside of here. I'm going to back this off. This makes, if I back this tension all the way off, it makes it much easier, to, not all the way off, but quite a ways off, make it much easier to put that new chain on or replace the chain here that I'm about ready to do. So let's pop this off. Okay. You can see this already has some bar oil on it. The bar oil is coming through that little hole right there. I need to make sure that that hole stays clear of, of sawdust, chips, whatever. A sharp chain is less likely to plug that up. When I get a dull chain and I start throwing fine powder, that's when I start plugging these things up. So make sure that hole stays clear. And then there's a hole on the other side, and that is for when you rotate the bar or flip the bar. So every time I take a chain off, I want to flip it over so that I get even wear on this bar. I also want to pay attention to sprocket wear. Okay, there's my sprocket. And you can go a long time. I've actually read things that say go two chains and a new sprocket. Uh, that's a little bit too often, guys. When you start seeing a, a groove dug into that, it's time to replace that sprocket. Stop in at Carl's Moore and we'll, we'll get you the right sprocket and, and help get you on your way with a new sprocket on there. Let's point out the brake real quick. So see how this can spin freely right now? When I hit that black lever forward, I've just locked the brake. So now that chain can't spin. And that's a safety uh, device. So when I'm running this saw, and if it were to kick back, bang, that locks and stops that chain immediately. That's awesome. But if that brake is on, and I'm running and trying to run this saw, trying to throttle it up, I will actually heat that clutch up, and I can do some damage to this housing here. So just, just want to remind you, point that out. Be careful that you don't, Try to run that chain when the brake is engaged. You'll do damage to this saw long term. So let's put this, this uh, chain and bar back on and let's get, get into a little bit more of the maintenance. Hey, when I put this chain on, I always keep this saw sitting upright. I don't turn it sideways, flip it on its side. I see some people do that and it kind of seems as though it's a, a struggle, a challenge. Make sure I have my chain the right way. So on the bottom of the bar, the side you're cutting with the most, the cutting edge should be coming back towards the operator. And on the top, the cutting edge is going to be running away from the operator. Let's pop that in, make sure it's in the bar groove there. Run it around the tip of the bar. This is why I said I'd like to loosen that because I didn't have it. So I fight it just a tad more, but no big deal. Okay, and then when I, when I get it on, I want to make sure that the chain is lined up with the grooves in the bar, or I end up missing and kind of screwing things up a little bit. We'll tension this chain up here, or pre-tension. This is always easy to do backwards and upside down. So it's probably the best way for you to see what's going on. Okay, we've got a pre-tension. Let's throw this cover on, like so. Put these bar nuts on here finger tight. And then we're going to finish tensioning the chain. How often should you sharpen a chain? That's a good question. I can have a brand new sharp chain and I can build that chain within two seconds. Two seconds? Are you serious? Yeah, dirt will just kill these chains. Rocks kill these chains. Wire, nails. So honestly, keep this chain out of the dirt. I know people that have cut cords of firewood on one chain and I know of people who have cut for 10 seconds and their chain is dull. So you will see that when you start seeing these nice chips reduce in size to a finer and getting almost, to, you want to stop before it gets to powder. But when you're throwing powder, that chain's dull. And the longer you go, the more damage you do to the chain, the more damage you do. you're working your saw more. So keep a sharp chain, right? As soon as you start seeing these nice chips start getting smaller in size, that's the time to stop and either sharpen your chain, throw a spare chain on, or bring it in and get it sharpened, okay? That'll get you the maximum performance in chain life. Tension this up the rest of the way. Again, hold up on the bar and chain when I tighten it. Because the bar is going to want to sag, right? If I leave it down, um, it's going to have, it's going to um, leave that chain a little loose. And when I get into the cut and start pushing on the bar, it will screw up my tension. So, kind of crazy. But I'm going to give that chain a spin. Make sure it flows free. Make sure it's in the sprocket, right? Air filter. 
To get to the air filter, first thing I want to do is squeeze the trigger. I want to go all the way down with this master control lever, this lever that's right here. And I'm going to flip this knob sideways. This air filter cover is going to come off. There's my air filter. And then behind this black piece is my spark plug. This piece is super important. If you are missing it, get it back. It's important. It's just a little piece of plastic, and it's just kind of hiding the spark plug, right? No, actually, this is a winter summer shutter. And what this does is allows heat from the engine, from the motor, back to the carburetor, the air filter area, and prevents it from icing. Very rarely does this need to be out. In fact, I tell most of my customers here in the Northwest, until your saw has a problem icing up, leave this in. Okay? And always, when you're done, put it back in because you start running this when it gets up to 60, 70, 80 degrees. I will do damage to my saw without having this in. So this little black winter summer shutter, something worth pointing out. My spark plug is right behind there. There's my boot. And then my air filter to take, let me get this winter sum, summer shutter back in. To take this off, I actually just put my fingers around the front and rotate back. Okay, there's my air filter. And this is washable. Dish soap and water, I can wash it. But if it starts looking nasty, they're like five bucks or less. So just throw it in. And there's a lot of air going through this machine. We'll, we'll do the math someday and we'll talk about how much air goes through this filter. It's insane, but blow your mind. Okay, and then put the filter on flat on the top and then push it in. Like, so let me just make this a little bit more of a struggle than it should be what I like to do. Makes me feel good about it. Okay, filter is back in. You know where the spark plug is. You know about the winter summer shutter. I want to point out real quick, this is your master control lever. And that turns the choke on, sets the high speed, is the idle, and then all the way up is off. I want to make sure that I am manual, automatic, manual on my sequence. If I try to take this automatic, this next step that's automatic, and do it by forcing it, I will damage stuff in here. And you'll have a problem starting your saw. So, squeeze it. Let's put this cover back on and let's start this baby up. Break on. Two ways to start it. One is leg lock. The other is down on the ground with my foot in here and my knee on top. Squeeze the trigger all the way down to choke. I knew I shouldn't have started this before. I started it before. I'm cheating. Traditionally, on a steel saw, I'm going to pull it two to three times and it's going to fire. And it had fired. So now I just pulled it three times. I didn't hear a single pop. Did you hear a single pop? So I've probably flooded this saw. This is great. This is going to show you how unflooded a steel chainsaw. So I'm going to come up one notch. This is where it's going to start. So had I not started this thing a while ago, I would have pulled it two or three times. It would have boom, gave a fire. And then I would have moved it up to this position. So now it's partially flooded. How's this going to react? There you go. Now you'll notice, now you'll notice, as soon as it started, I squeezed the trigger. Let me do that again so you can see it. And then return to idle. And then all the way up is off. Once it's warm, I can simply turn it on, pull the rope, and go. Now I want to make sure that before I try to start cutting, I take the brake off and get at it. Think safety, wear your safety stuff. Remember mixed fuel, remember ethanol food fuel, remember bar oil, proper chain tension. Careful not to fry your clutch. Remember how this switch works. When in doubt, you got your owner's manual from Carl's Mower and Saw, model serial today's date. Remember this thing, we registered your warranty for you, so you don't need to worry about that. Open up your owner's manual. It'll go over even more in depth than I did today. And you got this awesome sharpening card. We were talking about chips becoming smaller. You got this free chain sharpening. So get in here, get your chain sharpener. Keep this steel MS250 in awesome, proper working condition. And you will enjoy this saw for years to come. For a full line of steel products, chainsaws, blowers, trimmers, mowers, hedge trimmers, check out Carl's Mower and Saw, your power equipment experts.